Uh, my name's Juniper. Ooh, if I make it through it without crying and vomiting and having to use the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I wanted to go last because I have really bad anxiety. Um, I titled my capstone balance. Um, it's something I try to find um, within my life every day. I've shared my story a little bit with everybody um, about who I am. Uh, I didn't put it on my slides, but um, I'm gonna share it in my personal mementos, and I'm sure it can relate to a lot of people. Uh, I was married for 13 years. Um, it was a really bad marriage. I have two children from that marriage, and um, it, it lasted 11 years. Uh, it was violent, it was aggressive, it was emotionally, mentally, physically exhausting. Um, it took away from school. I failed as a college student many times, and I did not know how to get up until this time around. Um, I was homeless. I uh, suffered from mental illness. Let me use my pen. Oof, here we go. I've been diagnosed with anxiety. And um, PTSD due to domestic violence. Uh, it leads into depression and it's very stressful. I became agoraphobic. And uh, coming back to college, I felt it was my safe zone. And uh, so I, I, I joined a group on Facebook, and I found this beautiful poem. And it says, breathe. You're going to be OK. Breathe and remember that you've been in this place before. You've been this uncomfortable and anxious and scared, and you've survived it. And breathe and know you can survive this too. These feelings can break you. They're painful and debilitating, but you can sit with them and eventually they will pass and maybe immediately, but sometime soon you're going to fade. They're going to fade. And when you do, I'll look back at this moment, like many of you will, and um, laugh and or having doubted mine or your resilience. I know it feels unbearable right now, but keep breathing. And everybody's told me that many times this morning. Mm -hmm. Again and again, this will pass, I promise. And I tell myself that every day I have this on my fridge. And I think due to that site, it was called Surviving the Affair. Um, it placed a, uh, it covered a hole in my heart. Um, I have the scarves up there. Many of you know I wear a scarf every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably 10 months out of the year besides when it's shining the one or two. And... Um, Keep calm and wear scarves. This is my security blanket. Um, it relieves a lot of anxiety. The heavier the scarf, the more anxiety I'm dealing with. Can you tell? <laughs> the lighter the scarf, I'm having an okay day. Um, I want to share a video. Uh, uh, about anxiety, um, how I feel. And this is coming to school. It's outside of school. And... Um, Nail biting, foot tapping, running my fingers through my hair. If you look close enough, you can see it in unanswered text messages, flakiness, nervous laughter, a snake slithering up my back, clamping its jaws shut where my shoulders beat my neck, punching the gut stomach aches if my body's confusing, answering an email with being attacked by a lion. High function anxiety sounds like I'm not good enough, I'm bad, I'm not good at my job, I'm wasting time, I'm so needy, my boyfriend thinks I'm needy, why would I say that? What a fake, why can't I have my shit together? I'm a fraud, just good at helping everybody, everybody I'm not in myself, don't leave me like bad friend, bad sister, bad dog, not good enough, I'm not good enough. All the while, it appears perfectly calm. It's always looking for the next outlet, something to channel the never ending energy. Writing, running, list making, mindless tasks, whatever keeps you busy. Doing jumping jacks in the kitchen, dancing in the living room, pretending it's for fun, when really it's a choreographed routine of desperation. Trying to tire of these thoughts stuck in your head. 
It's silent anxiety attacks hidden by smiles. It's when answering a text impulsively and thoughtlessly is an act of bravery. It's finding your own humanity in the anxiety, in your weaknesses. It's trying to let the energy inspire you instead of bringing it down. A good first step is staring at it straight on and calling it by its name. This is Stephanie and Juliet. From the dairy farmers of... I shared that with you because um, that's how I feel every day coming to school. Every day when I leave school, um, I'm newly divorced. I've been divorced three years. I, I have a special needs child, you know, coming out of homelessness, you know, and dealing with all the other mental illnesses and appointments. So I just wanted to share that with you. A lot of you don't know that that's my struggle in school. Um, next slide. Hopefully I make it through this time. Um, it led into time management, and um, time management was really hard for me when it came to assignments. Thanks to Richard for helping me out, and many others fell. Um, so what I did is I utilized um, my student calendar. Um, it was also an app on my phone, and it would send alerts saying, this is what you need to do. I had to set everything in time with everything because it, it fell with anxiety. Um, I organized my assignments according to due dates in the front of my folder, at least I tried. Um, I connected with other students on campus and um, resources. So that way it could help me relieve some of that anxiety, um, talking to others. Uh, a bigger struggle was procrastination. I learned to set small goals um, for myself from this, um, set reasonable time aside so I didn't feel so overwhelmed with everything that I was doing. Um, and I utilized my resources, calendars, classmates, clubs, anything that I could to focus on that rather than the anxiety that would set me apart from completing anything I need to do. Communication. A lot of you have mentioned that, um, you know, thanks June for helping me out and being the voice. Really, silently, I struggle so much. It's so hard for me. I have so many nervous breakdowns throughout the day and a lot of you have been very supportive. Um, so I try to participate in class to overcome that and it has been so helpful. Asking questions, asking fellow classmates for help, um, setting a time for study dates. It's helped me so much throughout this quarter. Uh, my strengths, I think my biggest strength is teamwork. Um, I love being in groups or helping fellow students, especially when it's relatable. I, I think when it's relatable, um, you can resolve it a lot easier. Um, kindness, I think my biggest strength is kindness. Um, I made my classmates feel comfortable around me, and I love that. Uh, it's family here. Um, my classmates felt comfortable in asking me for help and sharing their stories, and I thought that was amazing, because we all share something very similar or common. Perseverance, um, I was admired by a lot of my classmates by what I've gone through, because they are going through it, or have gone through it. Um, yeah, four. Three skills I learned, money management. I'm terrible at money. Um, when I was married, I didn't have to think about that. He did everything. I was very codependent. So now that I'm very independent, I have to learn how to manage my money. So I've learned to set small goals. I figured starting with 10% of everything, um, it, I was very proud of myself because right before Christmas in a whole month, I was able to save $300 for Christmas. So I was really proud of myself. It was something I haven't done in the years since leaving. Uh, plan ahead, make a list of my needs versus wants. That um, assignment really touched home. Saving my receipts to monitor my spending, that was important. Then I can throw it away after 30 days. Um, journaling, note taking was a skill that I learned that was very important. So I would journal um, and write down my daily thoughts me also with writing as well. Utilizing my student calendar, my phone app, the note app, and writing personalized notes for my family um, taught me the importance of note taking. That way there was no miscommunication. Um, I also learned networking is very important here on campus. Um, joining a club, um, we had a lot of guest speakers come in 
and the importance of um, networking with other students and um, utilizing the resources on campus and following up. I think that's really important when you meet somebody on campus and then, you know, I'd like to follow up with you in two weeks. Make sure you do that. It's really important. So I found that. And balance. I put this last. Um, so it's just as your car runs smoothly when the wheels are in perfect alignment, you perform better when your thoughts, feelings, emotions, goals, and values are in balance by Brian Tracy. And I remember just going to so many appointments and seeing these all over walls, and I just loved how it spoke volume. That's my